So here we are again, headed south and with country Steve. You know, the last handful of years, I've been kind of getting this little salty bite and a little bit of a getaway and testing some products of some of the companies I work with out at the same time. And we've been heading south and doing some red fishing, snapper fishing, and a bunch of stuff as you'll see. But Country Steve's got a place down there. So he's got, you know, as always Country Steve, he's doing a little weasel and a little angling there. And we've got some kind of insight as to, you know, where these fish are at, what's going on. He's got dialed in with the people that we're gonna be around. And, you know, having the lodging down there is really key because there's just not a lot there. And so having somebody that's prepared, has some stuff down there. He's got a bunch of G Loomis rods and reels, you know, Shimano stuff. And so it's a, it's a really a big advantage. But before we even get there, you know, we, the, the elephant in the room, is when you look down there they, they're post hurricane like barely a month and there's just kind of death and destruction everywhere pretty much every single house that we drove in the couple hours that we went from new orleans to to the fishing deal is got a blue tarp on it i want to sell blue tarps country steve said he wants to sell blue tarps down there because it's just crazy the roofs are just damaged with all those super high winds i mean you see some of the stuff just piled up on the side of the road and you know thankfully there's just not a lot down there and when i say that i mean there's pretty much you know oil rigs is what we're looking at down there and fishing that's kind of a big deal you know half the the fun of these trips besides going with your buddies and of course the fishing is just that destination thing and there's so many little things that we've learned on a lot of the places we go and with country steve he's dialed in and of course the food place is what we've got to do that barbecue place we always hit on the way down and um amazing barbecue food that's just you know part of these trips it's you know planning for them and doing things like that and that barbecue place is always a must stop for us once when we're down there there's not a whole lot to do. So we get up super early there and we've got fairly long runs. So we're fishing in bay boats and we're starting off in that kind of Delta, the Mississippi River basically mouth. And depending on the day, you know, we're heading out into the Gulf of Mexico, maybe 20, 30 miles where we're fishing, you know, redfish maybe in the morning, depending on the tide or what's going on with the winds, maybe snapper in the afternoon, maybe the oil rigs in, in the late afternoon or morning, depending on the wind. So just like back home in the Great Lakes, the wind and the weather really determine what we're gonna do. But me and Country Steve, when we go down there, we like to kind of explore, you know, we've got no agenda. So we try to break up our days with maybe fishing for bull reds versus, you know, going for some table fare versus, you know, can we have a super nice weather day? So we're gonna go way offshore and try to catch some fish on the, on the rigs. We just break it up like that and really leaving super early in the morning is pretty much a go get them deal because even when you're there at like the time we are now, it's still god awful hot. I mean, I don't want no part of that place in the middle of summer. You know, gingers like me, we just like evaporate when it gets that hot. So, I mean, you just feel yourself sweating even in the fall or the springtime, you know, at six in the morning, middle of the day, forget it. But early fishing also made a difference. A lot of our biggest fish were caught, you know, basically as the sun was coming up. So, you know, actually doing the fishing here, there's obviously a lot of ways you can do it. And I, I joke with all my saltwater buddies that it's just a whole lot, hell of a lot easier than fishing for walleyes. Like these guys have like two tackle boxes, right? And, you know, I know producer dude was like, why are you so bloody? Like, there's just a picture of me just covered up. And a lot of that was, uh, you know, some fish blood, but it was squid excrement. I don't know. I think the squid pooped on me. But we're cutting up squid, and, and the handful of times I've been there, we've definitely caught our bigger snapper on, on cut up squid. So rather that's timing or it's just easier or whatever, but I can tell you the stuff stays on the hook a lot better too. So we're basically fishing a couple different things. Like I started off with one of the guys had rigged up, basically I'm gonna call it a Carolina rig, and that kind of sucked to be honest. So Country Steve, you know, he had a basically a three-way rig that was gonna allow that to kind of kick around in the current, and the currents were crazy down there. And you know, we're putting 10, 12, 16 ounces of lead on to get to the bottom. So depending on where we're at, we're anywhere from like 80 to like three or 400 feet of water. So getting down quick is really important, especially when you're on those fish. I kind of compare it to like perch fishing. Like you got to get up and down, up and down real fast. And when, when you get on those, and it's really important too, because you'll notice we caught a shit pile of sharks and those sharks, you know, most of them were small enough that they weren't going to like eat or snapper, but you got to get up and down so fast because almost every drop you're just getting bit so speed is key and that three-way has been a handful of times that i've done that it's always better and i and i've won a lot of money on three-way so i really like those but basically just rigging those up with circle hooks that was the other key a high quality circle hook because 
asking you don't want to spend your time deep, you know, trying to get these fish unhooked, and some of them aren't in the, in the size limitations. There's all kinds of different species. Um, so you've got to be, you know, it's, it's a lot different than back home when you've got walleyes perched and maybe smallmouth or something. I know the handful of species that are going to be in that body of water. So if a guy keeps getting sharks, should he be doing something different? Nope. Just no. Hold your mouth bite. What bites, bites. You know, a lot of people talk about Venice as being kind of the fishing or sport fishing capital, and I, I can't deny that it's it's definitely up there. But it's kind of like a lot of places I've been where a lot of the best fishing places have very little there. Maybe that's why the fishing is better because you don't have it as commercialized. But it's just funny to me as you go through there and there's just not a lot. It's, it's a slow living place compared to what I'm used to. And you've got these just million dollar boats everywhere. Guys paying three, four, five grand a day to fish offshore. Stupid expensive equipment. You know, we think our stuff is expensive as, as freshwater fishermen, but you see that stuff is really, really expensive. And then you've got like a lot of guys doing kind of like what we do, where they're fishing out of the, the flats or the bay style boats. And they're fishing, you know, within 20 miles of shore because after all it is literally the ocean and the Gulf of Mexico there. Um, you know, you've got, big, big water, and it's just, it just, you disappear really quickly. The amount of stuff that you see in the scenery is just absolutely beautiful. There's so much stuff as a, as a fishy guy or a guy that likes nautical type stuff, you know, those shrimp boats, all that good stuff. And it's just a really neat atmosphere for somebody that likes to fish. So, you know, as we head out to one of the, uh, the wrecks there, I look over the side and I'm like a kid in a candy store. I just see fish everywhere. You know, it's just gin clear water. We're in 100 plus feet of water easily. And I look over the side and I just literally have a, a, a shrimp on a bare jig. I drop it over and just like, I would say conservatively 50 to 100 fish just come plowing up on it. And they pick that shrimp clean so fast, you couldn't, your, your head was spinning. These spade fish, I guess they look like a spade, uh, but they really fight. They remind me of like a really, really big bluegill because this fish is not that big. But man, they just fight like crazy. And it was great because it was kind of one of those almost like, you know, something you'd want to take a kid fishing with, like panfish, because the action was absolutely constant. If we would have stayed there, we could have caught a thousand. So, you know, when we go down there, and do this and I've, I've spent uh, actually quite a bit of time red fishing in different states and, and doing some things you guys have probably seen some of the videos i've been in hosting shows and such and i don't know anything about it really but there's not a lot to it those fish are just they're cannibals man they just eat just seems like anything but yet you know they can be very finicky and basically we were popping the cork which is a really really popular deal down there so essentially it's a popping cork the short leader and it's a jig with a plastic nothing super complex but the thought is is you know we're in really dirty water these fish are on big flats and you want to draw them to you so you're popping that cork it also has to help suspend that um, that popping cork and jig so we were kind of using it like a pendulum so Long story short, you want to draw those fish to you, work that thing up and down, but not hang up. It's a super, super effective deal. And you know, it works well for bull fish, which are the, the big giant reds, or also the you know, kind of slot fish that you can keep and eat. But we've tried this in, in some of the backwater stuff, but sometimes when the bike gets really tough, we'll take that popping core off and kind of fish like we would walleyes. We're just using a jig with like a shrimp or some type of live bait. But this entire trip, the popping cork was the deal. Um, you know, these fish are getting ready to come and actually spawn in the fall time. So they're a little charged up and we were a little early because like everywhere, the water temperatures were warmer. But the fish definitely got fired up if you were in the right spot at the right time. And really a lot of this, I kind of compare to my, my experience on the Great Lakes where you just have just millions, quite literally, of miles, square miles. And it's like Lake Erie, like you find these fish in a one little area and that's where you gotta catch them. So that's where experience definitely comes in and just having to have a lot of you know, nooks and crannies that you know to look for when little differences in the environment change, like the current or the tides. You don't put me on it. I just, I'll, I'll try to sneak around the power pole. But... Yeah. Poop, poop, get him in the scoop. Yes. Take the ride. 
feel like I'm getting wrapped up in a spider web here. Spider pig. Spider oh, pig. Oh, I was trying to grab it for a Oh. Don't get all in a hurry. Chill. <laughs> Big mama bubble go. <laughs> Mr. Billy made a little move. He says it's a 30, it's going bottom out the boga grip. Head first, like a soccer star here. But we had a lot of fish over 20 pounds. I had some like 30 mark. But I know when the guys that we're with, especially Country Steve, because he didn't never wants to give me a compliment. But when he kind of starts getting on my way a little bit, and he's like, run to the back, you know, because he don't talk like that. I knew for sure then that I had a giant bull on. And that fish was in the mid 30s. I mean, just a giant fish. And you know, I'm running back and the other guy's kind of helping pull up the shallow water anchors so I don't get cut off on those. And yeah, everybody, when you get a really big fish on, same thing in my boat. They do things a little different. You know, guys start getting a little amped up a little bit more because they know that this is a big bull red no matter where you're at. You know, I, so you need a little bit of break. And for me, you know, people are like, oh, you fish all the time. And you know, there's a lot of pressure, you know, of, of, for what I do, guiding and, you know, promotional stuff, you gotta catch fish. And when you gotta catch fish, it's a whole different thing than just going fun fishing. So down there, the pressure's off. The fishing is usually pretty good, even when it's tough. And with Country Steve down there, you know, got things dialed in, all set in, I pretty much just go along for the ride. I mean, he's kind of like my water wife, okay? Maybe he's the water husband in this trip, I don't know. But it's really nice to just kind of have, boom, make no decisions and go because it's been a chaotic year for everybody, especially me, and I'm really getting ready to get back into my chaos season here. And um, I won't have a time off until pretty much this time again next year. So hopefully you liked the video. Stay tuned, we got more coming for you.